to part two of the seco meter now in this part we're going to have a look at uh, programming the meter up now if you've seen part one I'll put a, a link in the description down below uh, if you've seen it great if you haven't watch that and then you'll understand what I'm talking about now at the end towards the end I think or halfway through maybe uh, I kept saying to myself, I hope this chip's programmed, I hope this chip's programmed. Anyway, it turns out, when we powered it up, it wasn't actually programmed. Um, so we uh, we had to go and get a programmer for it. Now, I spoke to the people who um, who sell this unit, and they didn't admit to say, yes, the description is wrong, we should have put that you need to program the chip, there is no program on the chip. Um, but that doesn't matter, you know. I, I, I just thought to myself, yeah, that should have been in the description that you're going to need a programmer to uh, to program the chip. But that ain't no biggie for me, you know. I managed to... Uh, the program that I had didn't support the uh, the Atmel chip. Um, so I've gone and bought a, a new up-to-date one, which I think I paid about £6 for on, uh, on eBay. And great little programmer. As soon as I plugged it in, once I set it all up, Took me a couple of minutes to figure out what was what. Plugged it in into the uh, the the, uh, the header here, and away we went. No problem whatsoever. Programmed it up. We put the display on. Um, the original display, which is this one here, which I'll just stick back on. The uh, the original display here, we had uh, one line of uh, squares across the top, and I was like, "What's going on with this? Why have we only got one line of squares?" and it, it transpired that it didn't have a program in so we programmed it up and then when we turned it on we had two rows of uh, squares just black squares so I scratched my head for a little while thinking well there must be something wrong with the unit there's something I've done wrong to stop it from working so I got the schematic out again and then I started um, I tested all the resistors first to make sure that we got all the correct um, all the correct values in the correct place I checked the diodes, make sure they're all in the correct way around. I checked uh, various parts of the board for voltage. Yeah, that was good. I checked at the chip for various voltages, and I checked for various outputs off the uh, off the chip. And we had all that. So I then went, okay. Well, the only thing that's left, if we're getting a, a signal from the chip to the uh, the header here, from the chip to the header, is the display unit. So I then went, okay, I've got a couple of those display units kicking around somewhere. I grabbed another display unit, soldered a few legs on, because there's a few missing. I think there was four that was uh, was not populated on the last thing that it used. So I soldered four extra legs on, we plugged it all in, and we, we hit, the, hit the button, and well, hey, we had a display, and everything's working great. So uh, so that's that's where we were at with it. So uh, let's take a look at the video and uh, just see what uh, what it's capable of doing. Um, at the beginning of the video, as I say, there will be some uh, some of the uh, the testing of the circuit and uh, just just showing me uh, doing a bit of fault finding on the uh, on the unit there. Uh, so we'll do a bit of fault finding uh, and I'll show you how I came about figuring out that it was the display that was uh, that was at fault. Okay, so let's uh, let's crack on with that. Okay, so we've uh, we've finished the unit. We've uh, we've fitted the uh, the chip underneath, and we fitted this chip here, and we've powered it on, and we're just getting a row of black uh, black bars. So I was thinking to myself, okay, uh, too much contrast on the display. So we adjusted the uh, the resistor on the back here, variable resistor, which changed the contrast. It made no difference whatsoever. So this is where we're at with it. So we've got no display now. Uh, I, don't, I didn't, don't think there's a program on the uh, on the chip, so I'm going to uh, going to reprogram the chip. So we'll take that over in a minute and, uh, and bang a program on, uh, and then see if we get a display on the uh, on the unit. Okay, so we've got um, we've got the programming unit. This is the little uh, little programming unit that we're going to be using. This is the um, do 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 SP 200S. E this one. Um, now the S doesn't stand for second edition. I don't think. I think it stands for something totally different. So don't confuse it because I uh, I didn't get uh, any software with this, and I had to go hunting for it. I will put a link for the in the description for the software for this. 
it is the uh, Willow, I think it is, not not sure offhand, we'll, we'll have a look when we get on the uh, on the system. But anyway, it's just a case of getting the programming unit, and all we do is we plug that into the, uh, the header off the ISP port. And then what we need is, we need the USB lead, which is all the way over here at the moment for some reason. Just bear with me a second, whilst I just untangle it. Uh, my workshop's a bit upside down at the minute. Um, I've been having a bit of a move around and sorting some shit out because it's just been, um, well, it should have been one of those years if you know what I mean. And um, time to sort some stuff out. So anyway, so then what we need is the, uh, the USB lead, which then will connect into the programmer here. Like so. As you can see, we've got a, I don't know if you can see this, let me move this in so you can see. Oh, you can see we've got a red light come on there and we've got a red light on there to show we've got power okay so what we need to do now is we need to go over to the computer and we'll have a look at the software okay so the program we're going to be using is uh, WL Pro version 2.2 I'll put a link in the description there uh, where you can get it from uh, it comes from uh, willard.com uh, now the first thing we need to do once we've opened the program is we need to go to device and we need to select our chip. Now I've already got the uh, the 8089S chip selected. This particular chip is the 8089S52, uh, and we're at the uh, ISP port on the board, so therefore we want it on that one, which is at ISP. Click OK. As you can see, it's got the chip selected there now. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to load the program. Now, I'll put a link in the description where you can get the uh, the code and everything from. Now, I'm just uh, all I've done is I've clicked the load button and I'm going to open the uh, the this file here, which is a hex file, and click OK. And that now program that program is now loaded in and ready to write. Now if we want we can just have a quick look, edit it and just have a look at the program itself. As you can see it's all in hex so it means nothing to nobody unless you're superhuman and you can read hex. So anyway let's uh, let's carry on. So the next thing we need to do now once we've loaded the program into the program is we just hit the auto button and what this will do this will erase the uh, the chip it'll blank the chip, it'll check that it's blank, it'll then program it, verify it and write protect it okay and that's the chip program so it's as simple as that so that's now ready now then to uh, to have the display fitted back on and uh, we'll all be ready to go so let's get this back on the bench and we'll have a look we're getting a little bit tired now should be 9 volt battery pack um, right okay so I'm just gonna neutral work I just want to uh, probe onto there I've got 5 volts onto there I've got 0.7 on the middle and I've got 6.9 on there so we've got an input and an output off the uh, off the regulator that's all good that's all good 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 now then where's the drawing I need to uh, just grab the drawing here and I'll just show you what I'm just um, what I'm going to do now I'm just going to check for voltages at this chip here on pins 40 pins 31 uh, is that it? 31 and 40, they're the only two voltages in yeah. and then these are all the outputs here for the display so we'll check the, uh, we'll just check we've got all the correct voltages at the chip first so we want pin 40, pin 1 will be this one here, pin 40 will be this one the other side so again I'm just connect that to the ground and I'll just touch that on there and I've got 5.52 volts there and we said pin do, 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 31 so that should be 31 so let's just count up 21 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29, 30, 31, so that one there, hopefully, will be 5.52 volts, so we've got the voltage to the chip, so that's all good, we know that the, uh, the chip has got a voltage to it, and that's working, so, 
The next thing I'm going to do is have a look to see if we've got any uh, output off the chip. Um, now the way I'm going to do that, I've got a, uh, a logic probe here. Um, so I'm just going to connect the logic probe to the power supply as well. So we've got uh, power to it. Now I don't know how I'm going to do this to be fair because... the best of things to connect a power up to so let's just have a quick look on the, uh, the battery pack so I think if I connect that to that and then the positive terminal which should be should be that one there there as well okay not a very good connection but we have got a connection that's fine I don't move it too much now what we're looking for now we're just going to uh, we're just going to probe the uh, the chip and just check to see whether we've got an output um, for the display And all I'm doing, I'm just going across the um, the legs on the on the chip, and I'm just having a look to there's a high or low output off them, just to determine whether uh, whether we're getting anything. And as you can see, most of the uh, most of them are high. There's a low, high, 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 which means if it's high, it should be putting something on the display. Uh, right, okay, so the next thing we're going to do now then, I'm, I'm going to assume that, uh, that everything's good with that circuit. Um, looking at it, we've got voltage where we should, we've got things as it should be. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, all the components are in the right place, I've already been through and checked that. I've also just ran this, uh, this meter across it whilst we were off camera. Uh, and I just went went across, just checking all the resistors, checking them all, just to make sure what uh, what resistance they were. I've been through, checked the capacitors, make sure the capacitors are all in the right places, um, and everything everything is good. I've checked these transistors, make sure they're the right way around and they're in the right places. All good. Everything is in the right place. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to try another display unit on it. So I've got a display unit over here in one of my drawers. Let's try this one here. Okay, I'm gonna have to stick some, uh, some some legs on this. So just give me a second and we'll just put some legs on. There you go. I'm just gonna solder these uh, these legs on here. There we go. Sorry if that was off camera you couldn't see, I didn't realise it was out of shot there. But uh, oh, I've just got another, another display unit here, I'm just going to try. And um, power it home, I haven't got any, oh there we go. Well hey, okay yeah, so, FLC tester. Okay so, it looks as though there might be a problem with this uh, this display unit there. Okay, thank God for that. There's me thinking I might have uh, got something wrong on here, but like I said, we've been through, we've done the tests, we've checked voltages, all correct voltages where we should have. We've got outputs off the chip. Okay, so we've got the unit working. Apologise for the uh, the cut there in the uh, in the filming, uh, but we we ran out of space on the memory card. 
I should really uh, really check the space before I start filming. My favourite one is to, um, I've only got a half hour battery life on this uh, camera, and my favourite one is just forget, losing all track of time, and the camera will just go off, and I won't even notice, and I'll still be yabbling away for another 15-20 minutes before I realise. Um, that's normally happens quite often. Uh, so anyway, right, the... Uh, the first thing we're going to do then, only because we've got the uh, the leads connected to these terminals here, which is for frequency, which is marked FX, and we've got a ground and positive, so obviously these have to be the right way around, according to. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got a little program running called Tone Generator. Uh, you can get this from the, uh, the Google Play Store, and it's an uh, audio uh, test tone generator. And uh, we can change the uh, the frequency and the waveforms, um, and it will give us uh, an output of a certain frequency and a certain waveform. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to plug one of these uh, one of these jacks into the uh, into the headphone socket, and then on the other end, we've got another jack. All I'm going to do, I'm just going to connect these up to the uh, to the crock clips, and I'm just going to connect one to one end and one to the, the, the far end like so okay right now the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to um, we already okay so we're on frequency now we've got the button pressed for frequency and it's showing nothing so the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to um, turn the tone generator on that's him on now and that's 25 Hertz and as you can see by the display it actually says that it's 25 Hertz there so which is pretty good so let's just um, just hit the presets and I'll go for a 250 and that's 250 Hertz um, 20k so 20,000 Hertz 20,012, 20,000 hertz, yeah, that's pretty much 400. 400 hertz, yeah. 31 hertz, yeah, 31. Okay, we're going to go 800. 800 hertz. Um, 1k25. Yeah, 1,250. 1,600. 1,600, yeah, 2,500, 2,500, so that's all good, so just go 50 hertz, and 50 hertz, so that's pretty, uh, pretty damn good, in fact, that's bang on, um, frequency wise, um, and now, I, I haven't calibrated this, I haven't done any adjustments, now, there is a, a variable resistor here, uh, what it's for, I'm not sure, uh, I can't find any information on it, and I haven't fact managed to find any information on um, setting this unit up and um, calibrating this unit. So, but that's no uh, no big deal at this precise moment in time. We just want to just throw a few components on it and see how it performs. So that's the frequency. Now, the only the only bad thing about this meter is the fact that we've got a set of probes, and we've got one, two, three, four. We've got four different uh, terminals for testing. Now, I suppose if you wanted to, you could shove the, um, just stop the tone generator, uh, we could, um, the problem we've got is that we've got the, all these terminals, and we've got one set of leads, so every time we want to test a different component, we've literally got to change these, uh, these leads over to a different terminal. So, we've done the frequency, so let's go on to the, uh, the capacitance next. So I'll just change these probes over, he says, looking for a driver. Um, so we'll do the, uh, the, the capacitors next, and we'll stick this in, and again, uh, it is marked up with a positive side on sign here, so I'm assuming that uh, it has to be positive for the, uh, for the electrolytics, so we'll just um, fiddle with this for... 15 20 minutes trying to get a lead in see what i mean that's the only problem i'm gonna have to change these leads now the other option is that we just stick um one two three four four sets of crocodile clips on here or four sets of test leads different colors perhaps for the different um things that could be one way to do it 
uh, rather than having to keep changing your probes because obviously you're going to shag all these uh, connections up eventually you can see where I've unscrewed already and there's a bit of uh, a bit of damage on there uh, so right so we turn the, uh, the frequency off and we'll turn the capacitors on now we've got a small C and big C so I'll go for the small C first and we'll just grab an electrolytic now this one is a 400 volts at 47 mics this one so we'll just uh, connect that up onto there and there and we've got 44.0 naughts so 44.0 and it's a 47 so it ain't far off you know you don't expect uh, them to be bang on with capacitors they give plus or minus a certain percentage uh, so we'll try this one this one is a 2200 mics at 16 volts um, let's just uh, get on there without the probes touching each other and they're all touching 33.29 that can't be right because we're not connected 2200 ah you know what we're on small we're on small yeah we're on small capacitors so I think to measure the big ones you have to change from small to big so let's just try that again and make sure we get the probes the right way around although I will swap them around in a minute and see if that makes a difference get on there then now we've got 2800 according to that you can see that on there, 2800 yeah 2800 and it's a 2200 this one is a 3300 just pop that on there, 3300 and that on there and we've got 3468 3,300, 3,468 so there might be something to do with this um, this here because it's close in that vicinity that might be sort of um, calibration for the capacitors not sure as yet but like I said I'm not going to adjust anything just yet just to uh, not at all make any difference because I should imagine they weren't preset when the uh, when they, when they give you the kits so I should imagine that uh, it's just look at the draw of the position that's in so I'll have to find out what that uh, what that does and um, what that changes um, so we've got a smaller cap a 220 so I'm just going to swap that back over to the small cap thing so we've got 220 uh, got them the wrong way around and I will actually try it the other way in a minute so we've got 171 there and it's a 220 yeah it's quite it's quite a bit out there but uh, let's just swap those over and just just out of curiosity to see if it works with them uh, polarized the opposite direction uh, box that on there and we're getting um, 175 again so yeah it doesn't really it obviously doesn't look like it matters about the uh, polarity but it does actually show C plus on this side so I'm assuming that the positive side needs to go to that side uh, this is a 680 at 200 volts 680 at 200 and 684 on that one 684 and then we've got this one here which is uh, 220 now these are all used caps so I haven't got a new one in fact I'll grab a couple of new ones out of the box in a minute and uh, oh, and um, we'll see because like I said these are these are all uh, used capacitors so the, the the age of them is unknown I should imagine they're quite old because they're out of some old kits been kicking around in a box for god knows how long uh, etc so yeah so we'll just bang that on there now I've got the probes the wrong way around on this at the moment whether it makes a difference we're not sure yet we've got 187.42 and this is a 220 220 let's just swap them around the other way just to, to see if it makes a difference 187 187 on a 220 
Okay, and this particular one is a 400 volts, 100 microfarad. So, let's drop that onto there. Drop that onto there, and we're getting 95.03 mics. So let me just grab uh, grab a couple out of the box, some new ones. He says, let me just uh, that one and one out, out of there. No oh dear, I've just um, turned my workshop off. Just knocked the uh, isolation button there. Everything just went off. a bit of luck. Right, so boop, 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 boop. right okay so we've got a thousand microfarads at 50 volts here on this one so let's just connect that up. Thousand eight hundred and seventy three eight hundred and seventy three mics that one and this particular one here is a 680 at 25 680 at 25 and um, we've got 621 620 620 so it, it does uh, read them the accuracy on the capacitors there by the looks of it isn't um, brilliant but it probably needs some calibration. Uh, now then, the uh, the next thing to test. So what have we got? We've got capacitance. To inductors is the next one. So let me just swap these leads over again. Just bear with me a second. See what I mean about the leads? It's um, if you've got a few different components in a, and you, you want to test. If you're building a circuit and you say you want, to, um, I'll just check that that's the right inductor for the job before you throw it in. You know, you have to change your probes, and then you've got, oh, look, I've got capacitor that's not marked, I just want to see what it is, etc., you know, and you've got to, you've got to change your bloody leads every time. So, um, LX, that one there, is the inductor. Not sure if it matters which way around the go, I shouldn't imagine it doesn't, it's only measuring a, a resistance across a coil, and then doing some sort of a logarithm to uh, to calculate its its value so they're all off turn that on and we select the inductors and there we go it's got LX equals and it's already got a number up there so we've got uh, got this inductor here now this is a three legged inductor we've got a common common leg and then two separate legs so they should be off that between the common and one leg there should be a um, a value and then between the common and the other leg there should be a different value so let's just uh, throw that on there and see what we get now I'm not sure what the value of these are these are unknowns that have been took out of things so we don't know what they are at the minute so this is a according to that is a 452 micro henry's so 452 micro henry's i just want to write that down because i'm going to actually um, stick those on another meter afterwards and we'll just see how close they are so so 449 according to that they're not touching either them pros they are touching So 450, so we've got 451.3 henrys on that one. And the common leg is, oh, we took the common leg off, sorry, common leg. And then we're just going to swap to the other one, that's 450. And then this one here, keeping them separate, is 58.5, so 58.5. 58.5 micro henrys okay so I'm just writing them down just because I'm going to retest this one on another uh, another meter afterwards and just see what that that actual one is so I'm going to put that there with the piece of paper that I've just wrote on and um, we'll try another inductor and 20.4 micro henrys 
20.4 so we'll mark that as well so we've got 20.4 micro henry's and I'll put that on the piece of paper as well just so that we can uh, put it on the other meter afterwards and see what they are uh, now we've got another coil here this is uh, this is actually a transformer this by the looks of it but I'm not sure whether it will give us an induction inductance of the coil and it does 25213 so you could actually use this for testing transformers as well uh, by measuring the inductance of the coils 25169 yeah so it is reading something whether that is correct we don't know yet but uh, we shall find out so that's the inductors and the other one is capacitors uh, like ceramic capacitors so we'll just uh, swap those probes over one more time one more time he says come on swap them over one more time it doesn't matter which way around they go on this particular one is only the electrolytic and the frequency that it looks like you have to have your probes uh, the correct way around although we did prove that by swapping the probes on the electrolytic capacity it didn't make any difference but there obviously is a reason for it that's the way it's been uh, calculated right so we've got a few various uh, various capacitors here let's have a look we've got a 102 a 102 Oop, turn it on give it a minute to boot up now I have noticed there that one's down I have noticed that when you turn this on if the uh, if the frequency uh, the frequency if the inductor button is pushed we don't get a display uh, but once we turn it off and then turn it back on we get a display uh, okay so we want capacitors and I'll just pop the probes onto there like so uh, 991 picofarads and that is a 102k on there this is a 1 this is a 10, 1.0 see these crocodiles aren't that great for these little uh, little legs it's not even gripping that one let's try another one because it's too really small um, 471 this is a 471 and that's uh, touching probes 474 so yeah 471 474 that's uh, that's not bad at all that so that's the capacitors uh, what this one here what's this this is a I think is a hundred 0.1 or a hundred not sure let's just have a look well I've got 10,566 there so I'm not sure let's just try one of these four four seven which that is a four four seven four four seven oh, come on off four four seven that's four four seven so yeah um yeah so that that looks pretty uh, pretty good now the other thing we're gonna do I'm just gonna uh, just just use this meter here and I'm just going to test the um, these inductors now this one we've got three legs on now let me just see if I can uh, get those in there uh, we've got a common leg and a normal leg so if I drop that into one and three like so hopefully Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. I don't know if you see that on there, the light shining. Okay, so we've got a 0.44 millihenries, mh millihenries. 
what do we say? We said a 50, 58.5 micro henrys, so 40, 0.44 milli henrys. Let me just try the other leg. Um, common in that one then. Let me try that one, see what we get on him. Not point not six milli henrys. So yeah, so that's that's about right, isn't it? So that's the, the lower one. 0 0.06 milli henrys, which would be 60 micro henrys, and we've got 58.5 micro henrys. So yeah, okay, and then we just swap that round again. Does that confuse me a little bit? We got we had four five one and that is 0.44 so that would be 440 micro henrys which is 0.4 milli henrys so yeah so that's pretty that's pr that's not far off to be fair and then we've got this one here which was 20.4 micro henrys now I don't know if this will um, uh, I can get that into two legs yet let me just have a have a look. If you can see there, I've got that stuffed in there. And it says unknown or damaged, so it's not read that. Let me just try another uh, another slot. I might have to uh, just do a bit of jiddly jiddly like that. Go across so we can get it into two legs. I'll just hold that in there. And we've got a 0 0.02 micro, uh, milli henrys, which would be 20 micro henrys. And we've actually got 20.4 micro henrys on this. So yeah, so it, it, it is the same, pretty much the same reading as, as this unit. Uh, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's a look at the... What did he call it? It's a Seco Secometer, I think it, the the name it Secometer, and uh, yeah, and that's from Sandsmart Secometer that comes from Sandsmart. That so uh, thanks for watching. If you like my videos, don't forget to hit that like button, and if you hit that subscribe button, you'll get updates as and when we put new videos up. So thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.